Hey guys, welcome back to XO Medical Spa for round two on the things I want to hear and the things I don't want to hear. So if you missed last week's episode, it was about what you as a patient should and shouldn't hear from your provider. So I hope you got some good education from that. But now let's flip the script. What are the things I do want to hear from you as a patient? And what are the, some of the things I don't want to hear? And when I say I don't want to hear, it's, it's more of, is it realistic? But we're going to dive into that when we get back. One of the biggest things I want to hear is, are you coming in educated about the procedure? I want you to have an understanding of what we're doing. We talked about it last week. Does your provider explain to you well enough why they're choosing what they're choosing? But on the flip side of that, when you and I come up with a game plan together, remember, it's not just about me dictating what we're gonna do, but I wanna hear what you've heard of, what your personal thesis is, what rules do you have in regards to treatment? You're not a Botox person, you're not a filler person, but let's take for example, Botox, the most common procedure across aesthetics. If you're a first time patient, never done anything before, or if you come from another practice and you come to me, one of the things I don't necessarily wanna hear is, if I recommend 20 units, 30 units, 40 units, and for the most part, I'm pretty conservative. So even when I make recommendations, I always caveat that with, I'm gonna err on the side of caution and probably do less than what I need to do. But I'll also get your uh, feedback as well. But knowing that I'm gonna err on the side of caution, if your response is, wow, that seems so much. Typically what I do is I don't fight back. I say, why do you think that's so much? What's the recommended amount? And more times than not, the patient doesn't know. But if you just give an arbitrary number, then it's hard for me to understand where you're coming from. So if I say 20 units and you say, can we do two? If I say 60 units, if you say, can we do 20? Where are you coming from to get those numbers? Remember, this is a medical procedure. If you go to your doctor, if you go to your surgeon, if you go to X any other places where you get medical treatment, if they recommended you 10 days of antibiotics, would your response to them be, can we just do two days of antibiotics? Or next time you have a cold and the recommendation is this treatment, you need to do this treatment for the next four to five days, is your first response, can we just do one day of treatment? Take medical procedures out of it. If you were to go to the beauty shop and get your hair done, if you were to go take your car to the all body shop, if the person who's coloring your hair says, I need to do this to your hair and it's cost you this much, would you say no? Can you just do one quarter of the treatment and then charge me a quarter of it? Or would you go to the auto body shop and they told you, hey, you need four new tires to safely go on the road. You say, yeah, you know what? I'll just get along with one tire, but that's what's going on. No matter what recommendation I give you, if your response is, can you do less? We'll have that conversation. But if you do less, no, you're not gonna get as much results. If you do less, you're likely not gonna get to your goal. And if you do less, sometimes it's not even a safe treatment. Because if you're dictating treatment and it's not the procedure that you need, it may not necessarily be what you already want to be. And also it may not be a safe treatment. So that's one of the things I don't necessarily want to hear, although I want to hear your feedback. I understand your provider is giving you the recommended treatment plan. The next biggest one where I want to hear or don't want to hear is are your expectations realistic? I love it when a patient comes in and they tell me, I'm 50, 60 years old, and I want to look 50, 60 years old. I just want to look a little bit better, look a bit more refreshed, and just get back to looking the way I feel inside. I love those statements because it gives me a clear path on what you want to do, and it also gives me a clear path that you are honest with yourself and you have realistic expectations. We talked about this previously. If you come in to me and you've been a smoker your whole life, you've nothing but sunbathed your whole life, and the only skincare you know is the sweat that you perspire on a hot day, then you've gone through your whole life without taking care of yourself, and then you have that expectation that one syringe of filler is gonna fix 60 years of skin damage and not taking care of yourself. You can do all the lasers in the world, you can do all the Botox in the world, you can do all the fillers in the world, but if you don't have real expect, realistic expectations that you're gonna look your age appropriateness, then likely you and I aren't gonna be a good man fit together. And this also comes along with honesty. When we come up with a game plan together, whether it's 20 units of Botox, whether it's just a couple syringes of filler, and from the previous conversation, and you dictate and you say, hey, no, I'm not gonna do that much. I'm only gonna do one syringe, even though you've recommended three syringes. Then you have to have that realistic expectation that you're not gonna get to where you wanna be. Myself, my team recommended three syringes of filler, but you wanted to do one. By you cutting off two thirds of the treatment plan, are you gonna get to your goal? Now, the other part of this is, can you ever get to where you wanna be 
period. Is this a surgical issue? Do the pictures that you represent, that you are showing me, is that something you can ever get to? We've talked about ethnicity, age, race, it all plays a role on what you look like and what you can achieve. If you have a very traditional round Asian face and you're trying to achieve that Adid streamlined contour look, can you realize, realistically get there? If you are 50 years old and you're trying to get these 20 year old lips, can you realistically get there? And I try to filter this from the get go. If you have realistic expectations, then I say, fantastic. We're gonna walk this journey together. And I wanna repeat that, we're gonna walk this journey together because we're not gonna turn back the hands of time with one treatment, with one Botox, with one fillers, with one lasers. If you're willing to make that journey to get to a better place, then you are a great candidate for treatment. But if you say, I'm on a timeline, I'm on a budget, and I have these 30 years of youthfulness expectations, then we're likely not gonna get there. And more times than not, then I'll say, I'm not the right fit for you, and probably we can't proceed with treatment. Whether that upsets people or not, it's hard to say, but I'd rather be honest with someone than previous episode, where you don't wanna hear a perfect provider, is absolutely we can take care of that for you. Because if I'm untruthful in regards to what we can get to, then you're gonna be unhappy regardless. Now this third one may seem a little bit off, but I want you to be completely honest with me. Weird concept, right? You're going into a medical procedure, but yet you choose to lie. I've had so many times where patients lie about their age, lie about their history, and lie about even just getting treatment. But it's, oh, I don't wanna say very blatant, but it's very blatant their age is about 10 to 20 years off. They joke around me and then finally they admit that they're older than what they are. They've had treatments in the past or any other number of lies. Age is a huge part of it, but the second one is treatments in the past. Certain treatments don't play well together. Why a patient chooses to omit or why a patient chooses to lie, I'd love to hear that in the comments below. Why do you think patients lie or omit their treatments? But let's take, for example, biostimulators, Sculptra, Bellafil, and radius all stimulate collagen growth one way or another. If you take those three fillers and you combine that with other treatments, such as a traditional dermal filler, a Juvederm, a Restylane, or you stack on top of that PDO threads, if you have a biostimulator stacked on with something else, that biostimulator may overstimulate that next product that's there. And now you're gonna risk run the risk of lumps, bumps, nodules, and if you return, and then you admit to your provider at that point that you had these previous treatments, it's too late. If you come back and you have these lumps or bumps and you continue to fail to omit that you've had these previous fillers, then your provider will not have the full history and know how to treat those lumps and bumps going forward. Now, why this happens in aesthetics, I'm not really sure. I think the way media, the way medical spas, the way other providers treat it, as this beauty thing, this fun thing. I think that's why clients end up thinking that it's just another day at the salon. I'm taking a class four laser and burning off your face. I don't wanna be that graphic, but that's essentially what's happening. But yet we think it's just another day at the salon. We're just getting our nails done. We're just getting our hair done. But yet you don't realize I'm creating this controlled burn across your whole face. And if I don't know you've taken a certain type of antibiotics, I don't know that you're immunocompromised, I don't know that you've recently used hydrochloroquine and retinol all the way up to the point of the laser. All those things are gonna cause irreparable damage to the place that I treat with the lasers. So lying or omission of previous treatments or your current health is a big no-no on what I don't wanna hear. All right, that's, that's a wrap guys for some of the things I wanna hear as a provider, some of the things I don't wanna hear as a provider. And it all boils down to communication. And when I say I don't want to hear it, it's not that I don't want to hear it from you. It's we have to have this open line of communication. It has to be honest. It has to be clear. It has to be realistic. So you as a patient, please remember it is an aesthetic journey. There is no such thing as a one and done. Nothing in life is a one and done. If your purpose is a one and done, you and I are going to be a good match and I can refer you to a bunch of different places. If a provider says one and done, you're good to go, check back with the previous video, likely you're not gonna get there. So if you're willing to march along with me, have a lifelong relationship, and slowly let me help you get to where you wanna be, then we're gonna be a great fit together. 
But I hope you found that a little bit entertaining on some of the things I do want to hear, some of the things I don't want to hear. Leave some comments below. Tell me what your thoughts are. What are some of the crazy things that you've heard your provider say? Or maybe as you as a patient, what are some of the things that you regret you said it? So I hope you enjoyed this. Give it a like, give it a thumbs up, share it with the people you feel will be educated about this. I'll see you guys on the next episode.